What's going on guys? Alex here with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Vosti Raccoon. Um, this specific raccoon is rocking as you guys can see some beautiful um, milled aluminum scales. This has a crossbar lock from Vosti. There are a ton of different variations of raccoons now. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see. Um, I had the very first run of that raccoons um, with a button lock back I think spring of last year. Um, they've been around for about a year or so now. And I remember seeing it on Instagram one day and we were on break at work. And uh, I snagged one of like the initial drop or whatever. And I, I regret selling that knife. I really do. Because um, at the time and still right now, they're, they're not expensive knives. Um, and it's not, you know, sometimes that those are just like not knives that you necessarily need to, like what's for, like I see both sides of the coin because, um, you know, when you're chasing a grail or something more expensive, yeah, 50 bucks helps. But in the grand scheme of things, is it really, you know, 45, 50 bucks? Is it really that big of a deal? Um, I could just find the 50 bucks elsewhere. But I was young and, you know, I still am young, I guess. But um, yeah, I regret selling that knife and uh, I really have enjoyed this. This is the now third variation of ones that I've had in. I had the original one that I bought myself. And then I had in the um, cleaver with crossbar style lock um, that I got in a trade from Knife Dope. I ended up selling like a week after um, just because I wanted to chase something else, I guess. Um, and then I got this in. And this is the second knife in the package of Voss Deeds, which I did my full review on the docks in yesterday. Um, this was my first perfect knife I reviewed since I started doing the uh, new review system. Um, so that was very exciting. And I think this is going to be pretty high up there too because... It shares a lot of the same good build qualities that the Dachshund does, um, you know, because it's Vosti really just kills it on their build quality. And frankly, with their materials and their price point, um, all together, you know, baked together, Vosti makes a very good product. Um, unfortunately, this knife is out of stock both on Vosti and White Mountain Knives' websites, uh, but I will leave a link to the whole raccoon page on Vosti so you guys can go see what is available. Um, pretty much, you can either get a button lock or a crossbar lock with either a cleaver blade or a uh, just plain drop point blade like this one. Um, and then you can get aluminum, uh, you can get micarta, and you can get G10 and uh, satin, stonewash, and I think a PVD or DLC coated. Um, so there's a lot of different variations of raccoons out there. I, are you, uh, sorry, Ultim, you can get two. I lost a, my train of thought when I saw it, but uh, there's a lot of different cool variations and you can get like the micarta and button lock or the micarta and the crossbar lock for like 55, 60 bucks. And that's a fantastic value. Um, these come in around 70, which is also a really, really good value. But yeah, I'm going to quit rambling and get you guys some specs on this knife. But of course, it's rocking, wearing. I was going to say wearing. I guess that suits it too. Um, these really, really cool aluminum milled scales. You can get the aluminum in orange, in blue, in purple, and in black. And like I said, they are unfortunately um, all sold out. I think this pattern and the, the whole aluminum uh, scale thing really, really sold well. I love aluminum. Um, coming in with a Nitro V blade. So you guys can see it says Voss 3 right, right there. Nitro V, um, 3.25 inches on there, which is just a perfect size for me. Of course, you have about 50-50 choil or so. Um, of course, the crossbar lock, you do have a loop over style deep carry pocket clip that Vosteed has used on pretty much all their budget knives. One thing I really don't like is the design of the pocket clip. I'm not a huge fan of branding. I like just a nice sterile clip, but it is reversible, which is kind of a given with the ambidextrous capabilities of the crossbar lock. Um, a couple standoffs back there, lanyard hole. Um, as for internal milling, there are five... Four pockets milled in each liner, so it's pretty lightweight. Um, just a nice size overall. Uh, Nitro V is a great blade steel. Uh, you know, that and uh, 14C are, you know, kind of the top budget steels in my opinion. Uh, 154CM is pretty good too because you get that in a lot of Kaisers in the same price range, 75-ish dollars or so. Um, but yeah, blade length is 3.25, like I said. Of course, I think that's counting from back here, so you get a little bit less cutting edge, but it's still nice. Uh, overall length of 7.62 inches, blade width of 1.07 inches, blade thickness of 0.118 inches, so a very thin and slicey blade. Um, almost a full flat grind, but you do have a swedge building up here. Um, it's a flat grind. 
drop point, very, very simple with a satin finish. And it comes in at 3.66 ounces. So nice and lightweight. Um, it actually weighs a little bit more than the Dachshund does, which is funny because you have aluminum and titanium. And titanium tends to be a little bit more heavy, I think. Um, but it's like 12 ounces, or excuse me, 12 ounces. 0.12 ounces heavier. Um, but yeah, so all things considered, for the price, or I, sorry, I'm not going to do price point in this first category, but for materials, Nitro-V, aluminum scales, loop over style DPR pocket clip that is reversible, crossbar lock, great carry, um, I gotta go 5 out of 5. Most of my knives get a 5 out of 5 in materials because I do think that, you know, you have to have a pretty bad knife to get anything less than a 5 out of 5 for me, personally, I, I think I've come to, you know, realize, um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so yeah, next up, we're going to talk about aesthetic and I think this looks really, really good. I've said this for a little while now, or at least I've thought it. Um, but I think the, the raccoon, uh, specifically with the drop point blade, the cleaver blade looks good, I think, but I think this looks really, really good. And I, I've said it for a little while or thought it at least, like I said, uh, that this is just one of the best EDC looking knives you can get. Um, the, the drop point is just a simple design but it's very, very usable, very, you know, cutting friendly, very EDC friendly. And the pot clip, or the, excuse me, the pot clip, the handle just flows. You do have an indentation here and then a, a choil here, but it's just, to me, something about it has always kind of captivated me a little bit. And I just think it's a great design. Um, I think you as a designer who is the same designer as uh, the, the Dachshund, or uh, the Dachshund. Uh, and I just think it looks really good. It flows together, pot clip looks good. It looks good in either a button lock or a crossbar lock. Um, you know, and I know some of you guys are probably like, Alex, it's, it's basic. It's, you know, it's simple. But you guys know me. I like simple designs. I like basic stuff. And to me, this is just like maybe the epitome of simple and utilitarian and just uh, basic EDC necessity needs. Uh, necessity needs um, that you can have. Uh, so I got to go five out of five. Uh, next up is the action. Now, the detent is not as good as the Dachshund. Um, you guys know I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, of course, you don't have a front flipper, you just have the dual thumb studs. Um, and while it's not as snappy, it's still a very, very good variation of the crossbar lock. Um, and while I'm talking about that, one thing I did notice is on this one, you guys can see um, the crossbar sticks out wider than it does on the Dachshund. I don't know if that is a design technique or if that just, I'm not really sure why, um, cause this one you kind of have to pinch a little bit more, but this one you can kind of just like rest on, which is really nice. Um, it's, you know, not as, you know, a little bit more intuitive cause you just find it and it's right there. Um, you don't have to, you know, pinch and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that this is bad cause obviously this was very, very good. Um, but I just like to compare the two differences between the two. I mean, I thought it was kind of interesting, but thumb flick, Works really well, just flies out of there. This one does have a little bit of blade play um, from each fidgeting with it. I carry this and fidgeted with this almost as much as I did with the Dachshund. Um, so it got quite a bit of use and quite a bit of flicking and drop shutting and all those things. Um, so there is a little bit of blade play, but you know, I not enough for me to, to really give too much attention to. Um, but thumb flick works really good. Middle finger flick works really good. Uh, the thumb studs are nice and big and just comfortable. Uh, you guys can hear a great snap on the action or on the um, acoustic, which we will get to next. But middle finger flicks, middle finger flick works really good. Thumb flick works excellently. Um, thumb roll or slow roll uh, also works good. Of course, you can use the um, crossbar lock, which I forgot to mention in my Dachshund review, dang it. Um, apologize about that guys, but I feel like most people don't use this to open their knife. Um, uh, cause you know, I, I just don't, especially in public, you know, if you're gonna be using it to cut something, I'm pulling it out of my pocket and flicking it open. I feel like kind of already gains a little bit of attention. Um, cause you're just getting that nice snap. So I don't really like to, to pull it out of my pocket and to like flick it open like this, I mean, you can kind of use like the gravity and the way you're pulling your hand to do it. Um, but I feel like doing it like that just is more of like an aggressive way. Um, I'll do it once in a while at home and it is fun to fidget like that, but I tend to not do it in public if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, but 
I mean, it takes very, very little to just drop that down. It's just really good action. Um, I said in this video that this was my favorite, you know, rendition of the crossbar lock, favorite version of a knife that I've handled with it. And I think this has to be up there, close second, close third. Um, it's just really good. It's fun. The way the thumb studs are positioned, you just, you know, you drop it down, move your finger a little bit, give it a little flick, little flick, drop it down, little flick. Um, and you can do that for quite a while. And you don't even really need to pinch this or to like, you know, use two fingers on it. You can just use one. See, I just use my thumb, drop it down, or you can use your um, index finger. It doesn't work as good because you're not really like, there you go. Um, it takes a little bit more getting used to, but you can do that with the way the crossbar is enlarged and out of there. Um, but easy five out of five again. I don't know if this is going to become a perfect knife, but I think it, it's going to be close. Um, the next up is acoustics. One thing I really kind of have to nitpick, I guess, with this is it is aluminum, but aluminum, you would think it would give you the tings and the rings on a knife on an open. Um, it, it really doesn't. And that's kind of where I guess I'm going to knock like half a point for it. Because you get the nice snap, the nice, like it, it's the thwack. It just, it's a resounding noise when you open the knife and the close feels really good. And you can just sit here and do this for a while. Um, so it's really, really good and I still like it, but I have to give it a 4.5. Uh, spoiler alert, not going to be a perfect knife, but it's going to be very, very close. Um, and if it just was a little bit more like metallic sounding, a little bit more like high pitched instead of just kind of a loud, you know, duller sound, uh, if that makes any sense, it would get a five. Uh, but I just, you know, it's, I got to have a little bit more high pitched, I guess. Uh, but next up is Ergo's. Easy five out of five. Um, and I'm just going to write that down right now. And if you guys saw my full review on the button lock, uh, you know, this is just an ergonomic masterpiece. It's very, very comfortable. You have jumping up here on the top, um, choked back. I can get all four fingers on the knife nice and easy. Um, this just gives you this indent finger um, sort of indentation right here. Just gives you a fantastic sort of choke point um, with a, you know, a restriction point right here. The rest of your fingers follow suit. Uh, the pot clip is a loop over style deep carry clip, and it doesn't not it does not cause a hot spot at all. Um, can I feel it? Absolutely, but it's not a big issue whatsoever. It's not causing you unless you are like in a death grip and you are just squeezing this as hard as you can. It's not going to be an issue, and then you can choke up to this choil, and that gets you even farther off of the pot clip, and that makes it even you know just a little bit better of an ergonomic experience because you're you're taking the largest or the the highest part of the clip away from the equation whatsoever um, and that allows you to um, just really lock into the knife you know your thumb can either land here um, on the more you're probably going to land here you know choked back but choked up you can land here or you can land out here which gives you great control if you're doing push cuts through cardboard you know taking down boxes um, pinch grip works really good the drop point isn't the best but it's not the worst when it comes to dropping down into, you know, cutting packages, cutting labels, um, ripping through tape, things like that. Um, the aluminum, I really like the way this is textured. It's just a nice, simple, like, I mean, it's, you guys can see it's diagonally this way and then straight across this way. And it's not aggressive. It's not like overly grippy. Um, you know, honestly, if you rub your finger across it like fast enough, you can't even tell that it's, it's milled out on, um, cause they're very shallow, but it just gives it enough of, you know, enough texture to be locked in uh, and just gives you that extra little grip. And I really like it. Um, I love aluminum. It's one of my favorite handle materials. And I wish I had more knives in aluminum because I think it's really, really good. And uh, I love the milling on here. So uh, easy five on the Ergos for me. Uh, next up is Carry. This thing is really lightweight. I think it comes in at 3.66 ounces, like I said earlier on the stats video. Um, but loop over style deep carry clip. You guys can see it doesn't go to the butt end of the knife because they do have this. Um, actually, I don't even know why. I feel like they could have definitely, I guess that's another point where I want to knock it because I just feel like they had this room right here. You could have easily moved that up there and just gotten really deep with the pocket clip and it could be kind of flush with the scales. I don't know what made them not do that because uh, you guys can see it's easier to see right here with the uh, filler tab. But you definitely have a little bit of real estate to move the knife up and still have enough of a border around it. Um, I mean, with the 
the dachshund, you guys can see the filler plate is pretty much on the edge of the knife. Uh, so I really don't know why they didn't do that with this. The puck lip works really well. Um, you know, it has a great tension to it. Goes in and out of pocket really good. Sits down like this. You have no flipper tab, no jipping, anything like that to possibly catch on when you're down in your pocket reaching for things. Um, so that's a, a positive. But to me, uh, as, you know, as good as it carries, as lightweight as it does, this thing has seen uh, jean time, has seen gym short time, and has seen sweatpant time. And back when I had my original version, which is the same size, same same knife, just my Carter scales with a button lock, uh, you know, it carried very well too. And I think I gave it pretty high props for that. Um, but I have to give it a 4.5 because I just feel like they missed kind of the mark with not backing that pot clip up. And, you know, it's just, it's a small nitpick, but I, I, I like to give you guys my thoughts and my true opinions on it. And to me, if that were just a little bit deeper carry, because um, really this is just unused real estate, you're never going to really need that that section of the knife there. Um, so that's that's why I'm not giving it a, uh, a full five on the carry. But that leads me to my price point and, you know, what I recommend this knife slash value section of the review. Uh, and it's an easy five. I really think it is any variation you want in this knife is going to be a very good value these are sub 75 dollar knives um, they have yet to come out with a premium or a raccoon it has to be coming at some point i think a titanium version of this would be fantastic with like m390 or um i think they use i think primarily m390 is what they use uh is their premium steel but titanium or like a fat carbon scale some sort would be fantastic but for less than $75, the most expensive version I think is this, $72, which you can even get if you find the version you want on White Mountain Knives, uh, you can get 10% off. So I think they range from anywhere from like 55 to 72. Fantastic value. You're getting, you know, 14 c 20 in on some versions. This version, you're getting Nitro V. You can get, you know, aluminum scales, micarta scales, G10 scales, a drop point or a cleaver blade. Um, with a crossbar lock knife or, or a crossbar lock or a button lock um, loop over saw deep carry clip just fantastic ergos very very comfortable again just simple 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 you know and simple is better in this in this, this opinion um, it's just a very good knife and I think everyone should have a raccoon in their collection I currently don't but I'm leaning towards getting a new one um, just because this has kind of reignited my love for them um, I wasn't a huge fan of the cleaver blade, so I think if I get another one, it'll definitely be the drop point. But, you know, they're just really, really good knives at really, really good prices, and they're great value. They really are. They are probably some of the best sub-$75 knives on the market right now. And uh, I think Vossi does a great product on their hand, as well as a lot of other products they've come out with. But uh, I really don't have to do too much math because everything got a 5 except for two categories, which got a 4.5. So you're getting a 34, which brings it into the fantastic category. Um, the only other 34 I've gotten so far has been the Devo Knives Nip. So it is technically the third highest rated knife in my review so far of 2024. Um, and I, I think it's very well deserved. Just a fantastic knife. Fantastic all around. Um, if you guys don't have one, or if you have not experienced one, you definitely need to consider checking one of these out because they're just good. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, let me know down below. Do you guys have a Vosteed raccoon in your collection? If you do, what's the spec on it? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, yeah, love hearing what you guys tell me and, you know, complain about me, things of that nature. I love comments, but uh, I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your morning, evening, night, day, whenever you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.